out of the forge to the anvil. Quick bit there, the rollers. And around we go. Grab the ring, back to the anvil. Tidy up the ends just a little bit. Power hammer, typically this is on. Just for audio sakes. Quickly over to the fly press to flatten it all out. Back to the forge. Put it in. Grab the next one that's heating up. Over to this machine here. Line it up carefully as we can. Over to the anvil. Now, back into this machine. Oh. Line it up once again. Easy does it. And there you have one ring, 250 more to go. Here we go. Welcome here everybody, Tim the Blacksmith. So it's not clickbait today. We are attempting to make the world's biggest chain mail, but I thought quickly before we jump into that little trip down Tim's memory lane with that uh, real chain mail. I built this when I was just getting started in blacksmithing, which was around the age of 13. I actually haven't put this on for years. It would be kinda, I built it to fit, you know, I was like, I want to be able to wear this when I get old. So I think I'm going to try it on. I think it should fit still. It's always a bit of a trick to get into this. It's been a while. Oh my goodness. It's very cold. changed at all since I was 13. <laughs> you know what? It fits, but it doesn't fit like it used to. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, I'm gonna take this thing off and then we're gonna talk about what we wanna talk about. So here's a close up of the chain mail. And this is about the original size that chain mail would be except this is called butted chain mail, original chain mail, the ends get folded over, a hole gets punched in it, and then a little piece of steel gets inserted into that, it's called the rivet, squished, closes the ring and makes it strong. So I thought that would be pretty cool if that's how we did it on our chain mail. So here's one link of the big chain mail that we're making today, and you can see the hole, and then this is the rivet, that gets pushed in there, and then this will get heated up, squished down, and that closes the link. So you can see the insane scale difference here. I'm gonna start by heading over to the forging area, cutting this, the material for these, set up the tooling, and then we're gonna make these.
just over here by this machine that we've set up to make the rivets. I'm going to quickly show you what's going on. Okay, so this is the machine here. It's very small, relatively speaking, but it is an absolute beast. This thing just stomps the living daylights and anything you put under it. So I won't go into too much detail on this uh, machine because I've done a video on when I got it. The only thing I will say is we haven't changed anything of how it's set up. So I haven't technically set it up proper yet, but you're going to see it still performs great today. So we've got two setups here and basically how this works is this head will come down and we'll create the rivet head. I'll show you that in a minute. And then we go to stage two and that will push it out. You control it by using this lever here and if you just gently, it'll just slip down. But if you push it hardcore, it really throws a good thump. Super cool tool. I'm going to get a hot piece of steel and actually Martin's going to get a hot piece of steel and show you how this thing works. Okay, check this out. Oh, this is all the rivets, about 300 and some. We made some extra because the time to set up the tooling if we're short a couple is longer than making a couple extra, but these turned out so good. It's so fun using that tool to make these rivets. Wanted, uh, I wanted a little bit of like a aggressive looking rivet because typically they're either domed or flat. So that's why we've gone with this kind of peak to it because I think it's going to look a little bit more aggressive and mean and we want that on this chain mail, you know, or at least I think that'd be cool. So I'm having a little bit of anxiety now because each one of these rivets needs this huge ring that we got to make with it. So we've definitely uh, sold into some serious work here, but I think it'll be good. So we're going to now start making the tooling up, which is going to create the hole that this will slip into the ring so that we can rivet this on to the ring now. So hopefully we get this tooling figured out pretty quick and then can start making the rings and get going and see this done. So we've just got some tooling set up that we've made. This is gonna be to punch the hole in the ring. And this is the first one. So lots of question marks on how it's all gonna work, but let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Here we go. And now, I kind of just get set up a little bit here gently, hopefully. Oh, oh. Right, that's pretty good. Now I'll have to line it up again. Oops, easy does it there, Mr. Tim. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. So you can't see it because I actually put the plug right back to the other side, but that's gonna work for us. We just gotta knock that slug out. Dude, that thing is the beast. It does not even slow down for that. We're ready to rock and roll. Man, that's awesome. Wow, that is a good feeling. Wow, incredible.
So I just got back from town picking up the steel for the rings. One inch round bar solid. Look at this, 600 feet, 1600 pounds. All going into rings. Yikes, it's crazy. Looking forward to it, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, that's all of them, 250. Can't wait to see this all come together now. So, it'd be like a good recliner, recliner chair. Let's just, uh, let's just take a seat here. It's actually not too bad, you know? Except there's a hot one on my bum. <laughs> oh, there's something hot down there, I'll tell you that right now. Woo! Okay, so we're just in the midst of starting to rivet the single links together. I'll just show you what's going on here. So this is the first step in putting the rivet into one of these rings. So Martin just grabbed it here, a rivet, and he's just gonna push it in. Sometimes there's a little bit of cleanup that has to happen and whatnot, so he's taking care of that. Once that's good, And he quickly throws it in the forge. We're actually pretty full right now. But we have these just preheating. And then uh, I'll just give the camera to Martin here. So then I grab a ring, bring it over here. We're just using the forge to do a, just a little bit of preheat on it. And then I use the torch and just heat this side up the rest of the way. And quickly bring it over to our favorite tool, upsetter and oh yeah, love that thing. Could do it all day long. I guess I am. <laughs> That's a closed ring and uh, we got a whole bunch more to make. So we will see you when we've got this all done. This is the pile here, uh, that's like 50, all closed up. Got another pile there, and another pile right here. And that is pretty much, should be all the ones we need to close individually. And now we finally get to start weaving, making these sets up. So we're gonna take four of these rings down here, put them on an open one, put them together, close it, and then I'm hoping that I can make that set under uh, do the rivet under here on the upsetter. So 
Let's see how this goes. So this is gonna be our first set right here. Gonna figure it out as we go. Let's see how this opening up. You okay there? Cameraman just walked his head on the, I got a gouge on my head. That's that gouge right there. I actually did a video right after I'd done it. And that gouge is from running into the corner of our lights here. I was running Mach 1, came right up, hit the corner, and I literally lost a chunk of my head that's never coming back. You say, yeah, you lost a lot of your head a long time ago. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyways, that is nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. I probably lost my heat talking, too. Let's maybe just put it back in and try that again. So we got this figured out a little bit better. I'll show you our process here. So we put this in here. This is a tool that I'm using right here. It's called a bending fork. It's just used for bending steel. Throw four rings on and then close it up and then use this long tapered punch. And then I just give it a little bit of a tweak. Oops, with this. Oh, it's holding it. Okay. Oh, that totally did not work. Well, like I said, we're still figuring this out. <laughs> Almost killed the camera bad right there. Luckily, that was. That could have been so bad. Cut, cut, redo. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, a little bit. Just about wiped him out. That's fun to laugh about when it's uh, okay. Wow. Okay, that's a set. And then I just let it go. And then we get the next one going. Just like that, folks. Just that easy. Okay, so once we've got these guys all put together, we've kind of rigged this system up here to where we just slide these rings on. And then the ring that has to be riveted just sits there so I don't have to support the weight or have my hands in it. And then I'm just gonna heat this up. Okay, that'll be good for the heat. All right, and that one is done. So now this is a set, and that's as much of the work that we can do under this machine. The rest of the rivets will have to be done by hand. So I'm gonna take this down, and then Martin and I will both be going at this. One guy will be putting the rings on, and the other guy will be stationed here riveting. And then we're getting close to the handwork, so it would be exciting to see this all come together. Look at that, eh? Gnarly, man. Woo! Ah. So I thought I'd quickly just show you the pattern of chainmail that we're making. We're making the most common pattern and it's called a four in one. And that's because one ring goes through four rings. So here you can see it. This is the one ring that we were heating up and bending. And then we put these four on and then close it up. So that's the pattern. So when you have the riveted chainmail like this, 
you kind of get these lines running like this. The flats go this way and then this way. And when it gets into the bigger spectrum of everything, it starts to look kind of cool. So what we'll do is we'll make this. This is one set or pack. Another one comes in here. And then we'll take an open ring. Uh, if this was a ring that was open, and then this would feed through these two here. And then if this was the next pack here, these two would go into there. I just thought this would be a great time to show you because it's easy to see it when it's huge like this rather than the itty bitty links that you typically see. Okay, new day. Super excited because we finally get to start putting these guys together. This is a pile of some of the packs. We got rings everywhere though. Pile here, pile there. I'll show you this other pile. Got these guys here. This is where it's going to start to get tricky because we're going to have to start heating these up, opening it up, and then once it's opened up, slide it in between the two sets, close it, and then rivet it. So it's going to get hard because we won't be able to move much because it's going to get heavy. And all of these guys have to be opened up and put in. So it's going to be fun. Looking forward to it. Hard work still yet though. So this is going to be our first one we're putting together here. We're just going to be, Martin's running with the ring. He's going to heat it up and then quickly bend it. And then we're going to put it through here. It'll probably be a little bit fumbly here, but we'll see how it goes. Just because it's our first one. got it fed through and now we're just figuring out our setup to support the rivet so that we can heat it up and rivet it here in place. Here we go. That was a little rough, but we'll get her smoothed out as we continue to do a couple hundred of them. Ha! Huh. So we're just setting up for our second row to come in here. So we're going to start by putting the ring through this one, and then we'll put another set in here, and then put two rings in, you know, one here and then one here. Things are starting to smooth out a little bit better. We're getting better flow here. We just realized, ah, oh, we made another mistake. One of these rings went through the wrong loop. I can't show you because it's just this huge mess, but no, what were we thinking? We weren't. We're gonna pull a rivet out and try to fix this up so we can keep going. Cannot believe it, it's so big. How could we make that mistake? Ah. Oh. Okay, we're gonna 
call it there for today. That's a full day worth of work for two guys. We're going to pick it up tomorrow, and I think it's going to go a little bit faster, so I'm hoping we can get it done, but we'll see how it goes. See you tomorrow. Look at this, hey? This is, this is another day of full work for two guys. So, we didn't get it done, but we're really, really close. So we're gonna pick it up tomorrow. See you tomorrow again. Okay, last ring, here it comes. Crazy. Well, what can I say? It's pretty cool to be on the last ring. I feel extremely exhausted. Been working on this project for over three weeks, so it's nice to see it come down to a close. Excited to see it done and also excited to move on to the next project. All right, let's let it go. Last one. GB, done. There it is. We're gonna try to hang it up. 
think it'd be pretty cool to see what this thing looks like when it's hanging up. I wonder how much I can pull. Oh. oh, come on, I can do better than that. I'm gonna try the quarter. Quarters didn't even, it moved like this far. That's it. I can move like a quarter of it. Well, I thought we grabbed the corner, but okay. Wait. I can't really pick this up. Never mind. Move it. Okay, recruited the big guns here. Volunteered my dad to help us out with the mini excavator here to lift this thing up. So I got a chain hooked up right here. We're gonna pull this thing out, pick it up. So Martin, how does it feel to see all that hard work we uh, just made get dragged through the dirt and rocks? <laughs> so when we picked it up, it's surprising how much it's stretched out in length. So we're gonna hang it on this A-frame here. You haven't seen that yet, but the A-frame is short by a little bit, about a foot. So we got some big beams over here we're gonna quickly put up on the concrete and then we're gonna weld this A-frame to it and then we're gonna hang it up on this thing. I think it'll work pretty good. So I'm just gonna get set up with that right now. It's big. It's big. Seriously. Look at this. That is insane. That is one inch round bar, 600 feet, 250 links, and 1,600 pounds. Man, that's crazy. Now I know you're thinking it, and I'm thinking it too. How strong is this chain mail? And wouldn't it be cool if we could test it? Let me know in the comments below what you think is a great way to do that because I want to dream something up and I want to test this. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, click right here so you don't miss out on any of our future projects. Also, if you haven't checked out our merchandise, click right up here. Really appreciate the support in that way and we will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Hey Martin, bet I can beat you to the top. Oh, yes! Woo! Oh, All right. That's good. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, man.